The Passion of Joan of Arc is among the most influential and important films ever made. It is regarded as a true landmark of cinema. This is true for a number of reasons. However, the film is particularly significant for its concise yet aggressive editing, its artful and emotional compositions and framing techniques, and, most significantly, its heartbreaking and raw lead performance. The film was released in 1928 and directed by Danish film director Carl Theodor Dreyer, who would later go on to direct a handful of other important works. These include 1932's Vampire, 1943's The Day of Wrath, and 1964's Gertrude. The Passion of Joan of Arc instantly grabs and holds attention with its dramatic imagery and extremely modern tone. By just one frame, it's easy to tell that this film was way ahead of its time in 1928. The film's camera movements and establishment of physical space allow images to grow far beyond that seen in most films of the time. Few directors were as brave or as cinematically minded as Dreyer where images were involved. The film's imagery brings innovation with every shot. However, the film uses one type of image so brilliantly that it may linger in your mind as a key cinematic memory forever. That is, the close-up of the human face. To this day, no other film has captured so perfectly the intense range of emotional depth a human face can hold. In Joan's face, we see a pain and suffering so deep and troubling that words would simply be wasted attempting to describe it. Dreyer emphasises Joan's facial expression so greatly with his camera that it eventually becomes impossible not to feel deeply concerned for her by the film's final act. After leading many battles against the English during the Hundred Year War, Joan of Arc is captured and brought to stand by the French clergyman loyal to the English. Joan strongly believes that she has been sent on a mission from God to destroy the English and protect her motherland France. During the trial, the clergyman tried to psychologically break Joan, attempting to convince her that she cannot be correct in hearing the voice of God. They viciously attempt to torture and befriend Joan, in the hope of destroying the faith she holds in God and her holy mission. The clergymen are filmed as though they are from the deepest of Joan's nightmares. They hold within them different traits, some becoming dominating and intimidating, others playfully evil and frustrating, teasing Joan whenever they can. The clergymen and Joan are filmed in completely contrasting ways. Joan from an exposed and vulnerable high angle shot, and the clergyman from a safe and empowering low angle shot. You may also notice that the light on the face of the clergyman is much harsher and almost artificial, whereas the light on Joan's face feels more natural and innocent throughout the film. It is hard not to be taken by the film's editing, which may be best described as simply chaotic. The film flows not as a step-by-step -step account of truth, but rather as segments of painfully charged passion meaning that every scene brings with it an enormous amount of emotional depth. For a film with no dialogue, The Passion of Joan of Arc expresses an awful lot. The energy created within its frames is perhaps the most sincere the cinema has to offer. Its imagery is innovative and its performance is heartbreaking. You may find yourself never being able to look at the human face the same way ever again. If you are new to silent films, there is truly no better place to start than Dreyer's The Passion of Joan of Arc. It remains one of the most significant films ever made. And, as long as we keep its legacy alive today, its imagery will inspire future filmmakers for centuries to come.